it's Michael from Planet Naturopath and today we're going to talk about adrenal testing. There's three different ways you can test adrenal hormones. One is blood testing, which is commonly used by doctors, but this only gives you a snapshot of about 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning of your total cortisol. And cortisol is made up of free cortisol and total cortisol, but it's important to understand the free cortisol, which is the metabolically active portion. A better option is the saliva adrenal test, which measures free cortisol at four different times during the day. But the saliva test doesn't give you your total cortisol, which is also important. Remember, free cortisol is only 3%. So you could have low free cortisol, but a high total cortisol. My preferred test is the Dutch hormone test. Dutch stands for Dried Urine Test for Comprehensive Hormones. The Dutch test can be shipped anywhere in the world. This is the envelope that it comes in, and once you get the dried samples, you put them back in the envelope and ship them back to the lab. Let's have a look at the Dutch test and how it differs from saliva and blood testing and how much detail you can get in the test results. So we're going to have a quick overview of the Dutch hormone test. The Dutch test measures your basic sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, and also how testosterone is metabolized, and how the estrogen is metabolized as well. It measures your total free cortisol, as well as the total cortisol production and how it's metabolized into cortisone. And also measures melatonin levels. So here's just the first page overview of the test. And we go into far more detail with the sex hormones and the adrenal hormones on other pages. But on this video, we'll just go through the overview. So here's a lady with normal progesterone levels, but very high estrogen levels. So we want to also measure how the estrogen is getting detoxified. The cortisol levels look okay. They're a little bit high at night time, which reflects in this client's difficulty in falling asleep at night time. They have that tired but wired feeling. But free cortisol and metabolized cortisol are in the normal range. DHEA production is high, and that's probably relating to the high estrogen levels. Here we've got high free cortisol, but low total cortisol. This is often seen in conditions such as low thyroid, inflammation, uh, excessive licorice supplementation, when it's, especially when it's unnecessary. And with all these cases, it's always important to be identifying the underlying cause and not just treating high free cortisol, for example. Here we've got low free cortisol, but higher total cortisol. So on a saliva test, you would only see the low free cortisol and assume that someone has low cortisol, but in fact their adrenals are producing plenty of cortisol. Here's another situation with low free cortisol, but they're still producing plenty of cortisol. And look at the DHEA here, that's also high, indicating some more inflammation somewhere. So identifying why this is happening. Here we've got a man with very high estrogen levels, very high metabolized cortisol, which is, and this picture here is often seen in men with uh, obesity, which is the case here. And there's a lot of inflammation and insulin resistance happening. Here we've got low free cortisol and low total cortisol. This is more like the classic adrenal fatigue picture. You don't often see results like this. There's always usually some element of either normal or higher cortisol. So this is associated with extreme trauma, chronic health problems, PTSD, conditions, condition, conditions where someone's been through a, you know, a lot or something for a long time. Now we've got the complete opposite again. We've got high free and high total cortisol. It's always important to address um, or rule out things like Cushing syndrome, which is not the case here. In fact, they've got one low reading, whereas in Cushing's, Cushing's you'd have no low readings. So once again, this is a guy with extreme inflammation, uh, chronic pain problems, obesity, insulin resistance. So I think addressing those underlying causes as well as trying to lower the total cortisol. 
Here we've got low daytime cortisol, but high and rising nighttime cortisol. So this particular client finds it almost impossible to fall asleep. It takes her three to four hours to fall asleep at nighttime. And, but even though she's feeling just exhausted, she's got that tired but wide feeling. And of course, the, she wakes up in the morning exhausted and the whole pattern just repeats itself day after day. So feeling exhausted in the day, but not being able to sleep at nighttime. Here's a quick overview of the metabolism of estrogen. So this client here has very high E2, which is the strongest of the estrogen. And the estrogen can get metabolized down three pathways. The protective pathway, the 2-hydroxyestrone, or the 4-hydroxyestrone, or the 16. And you can see here they're very high on the 4-hydroxyestrone pathway. This test also measures methylation. And if they're not methylating this estrogen very well, it can lead to DNA damage. And that can, you know, worst case scenario lead to cancer, but also things like fibroids, cysts, breast lumps. So you really want to not just lower the estrogen here, but improve the detoxification of estrogen through the liver. So if you'd like to find out more information or would like to order the Dutch hormone test kit, go to planetnaturopath.com. There you can order a test kit, schedule a consultation to find out if this is the best option for you, and the test kits can be sent worldwide.